All right, guys. You are connected at the hip now, and you have been for these last uh, 25 years. Do you remember the the first time you ever got together and were paired up? I think it was when we met in the locker room, and uh, you know our our lockers are right next to one another because we were the freshmen coming in. There was only so many uh, spaces, and we uh, kind of chit chat a little bit over there. And uh, I think that was probably the first. Uh, we're all, hey, we're always tired because every time we came in the locker, we're like. <gasps> Like we made it, we made it again. And you could share, I guess, in, in what it was like uh, to be freshmen adjusting to playing at this level. Yeah, we were. I think we both were kind of quiet, you know. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, you have your beginning of the year meeting where the team gets together. So that's usually in the locker room. But you know, Rose, uh, upstate guy. You know, I, I was from the Midwest, so I a little different turf, you know. But uh, you know that was the start of, of many, many good good years together. Was that an adjustment coming from Cincinnati to here? No chili. Yeah, it guys. was an adjustment. Yeah, yeah, it was an adjustment. M mainly the East Coast. You know, I'm a Midwest guy. And my my pace was a little slower, but uh, this is a, a good place to be because you know you, you, I met a lot of guys from New York City and different places, but it, it, it felt more like home. But and the weather was somewhat of an adjustment. Rosie, what about you at that time? The coming here from the Rochester area was not new. At the time, the program was a regional program, and you guys helped lift it to this. I mean, it is now a nationally prominent program. What were those first sort of formative years like? Well, I, I the thing that I remember was when I when I came here, I was uh, they went to the Final Four, the I think the year before, and I saw them on television, and I was like, man, I that'd be a nice place to go. And I'd been coming down here to camp, but I'd never. Uh, I come down to the camp, and Coach Beheim was the assistant coach. But I was kind of, kind of questioned if I wanted to come down here because uh, the other coach. I was a slow country boy. I liked Coach Beheim. I'd come here, and he, I never forget. I used to come to the camp. He'd have on his sneakers, but you could tell that he, he didn't have his feet in them. They're like walking on the back of him, so you could tell he just came back from golf and there's something. And he'd, you know, say like two or three words, and he was really calm. And then I talked to the other coach, and he was, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, and he had a cigarette here, and he was talking fast, and. His hair is all slicked back, and there's nothing wrong with him. He's a great. I saw him uh, a couple years ago, and he's a great guy. It's just that in my in my life, I uh, they say you should try to pick uh, pick your your coach that has a similar characteristics to your father. You know, my father's kind of soft spoken, says he's a man of a few words, but when he spoke, we li he listened. And if you have that similarity between uh, the two, you'll never have a, a tendency to be rebellious against one or the other. Yeah, that worked out, I guess. Oh, right? uh, yeah, it did. Did you, did you have an idea at the time that Jim Beheim in, in the late 1970s was going to be what Jim Beheim is now in the 2006? Well, we, we kind of knew that uh, when we when we when he'd start explaining stuff like about basketball, like my knowledge of basketball was when I used to sit down there, I just, my knowledge of basketball was I'm going to run the other guy until he drops dead. I mean, I, because I knew I could run because I played against guys 6'2". I played against 6'2", 6'3", centers. So when I saw a seven-foot center, I would was, I was start thinking, oh, he's got to be slow, so I'm going to just run like a madman. And then, you know, being around Lewis and Ed and talking to Coach, and, you know, I, when I talked to Lewis, I was like, holy smokes, this kid knows basketball. And so it took a very short time. I, I found people that knew basketball, and I watched everybody. And, uh, you know, there, there's, a, there's a saying that you can be, become a very good player learning from your own mistakes, but you can become a great player learning from everybody else's mistakes. So I, I, you couldn't get me to say three words because I was always listening for years. Lewis, the, the uh, record when you guys were here is three years combined you know, as starters, 74 and 14 in those three years. That's an average year of 25 yeah. and 5, basically. Yeah, we, we got off to a pretty good start, you know, and uh, it was always about team uh, with us, you know, and, and, you know, back then, Nobody averaged 20 points, you know. Uh, was, you know, we had great depth, and we just were a very good team. You know, we played together, and that's one thing uh, with Coach. You know, he got everybody involved, but it it all anchored around Roosevelt because uh, he was the biggest concern. You know, he was the guy. You know, uh, he was a seven footer that could play both ends of the court and was going to shut it down on D, and was going to run, outrun, and, and and give you a low post presence and was going to do the little things even if he didn't get the ball. 
So he made my job a lot easier. And then you had guards like Eddie Moss and uh, Hal Corn and Marty Head, you know, guys that, you know, blended in and knew, knew their jobs. So I think we, we uh, exemplified the team, team. Both of you guys have spent your post-college lives in basketball what, and other things. But what has the game given you? What has it meant to you? And what have you given back? Well, uh, for me, you know, I, I think God gives you gifts and talents uh, to not just bless you, but to bless other people. And uh, basketball is, you know, it's, it's been such a part of my life, it's hard to think of it not being in my life from, you know, getting me a, a free education here at Syracuse uh, to having lifelong friends like Roosevelt and Eddie Moss and Marty Head. Uh, to, uh, you know, being able to pay my rent, and, you know, feed my family, you know. So uh, it's just been a, a, a great instrument in my life. And really, uh, it kind of came together. It really started to develop and grow when I got to Syracuse. Rosie, for you, it's, it's made you, it allowed you to see the world. Uh, yes, it, uh, you know, uh, it, it's pretty interesting because some of the things that we were learning here at Syracuse, you know, about playing and about team teamwork, and I knew that at the, I, I used to tell myself, pay attention to everything that's going on around you because you're a part of something special. Because, and I, and it, when I started playing for other teams, I realized it, and it's like Lewis said, we didn't, we didn't care who did anything, just as long as we won. We'd look out there and we'd say, okay, what, what do we have to do? Coach would set us up or, you know, to what we needed to learn to win. And then we'd talk amongst ourselves, like, what do we have to do to win? You know, and I didn't care if it was blocking shots or if it was playing you know, on offense or drawing attention. And one of the things that I learned a lot from Lewis was that I noticed that I used to draw a lot of attention, and I would watch what he would do. I, I mean, I could see what he would do when I would draw a lot of attention. He you know, he'd went to the offensive rebound, so at at any given time, when they when I played with Marty Burns, if somebody did that, like he was the big scorer, and they would you draw a lot of attention, then I would try to, instead of standing and watching, I would try to be active. And uh, you know, Lewis was one of the best at uh, being active, going to the going to the basket. And, uh, and I always said, if I can, if I can stay close, and being as a that active, it'll make it really difficult for anybody to key on either one of us. And you guys have all talked about the team, but at the same time, it always came back to the Louie and Bowie show, right? How, how did that? get started who came up with it was it uncomfortable for you nah, well no nah, no nah. you know what we stepped into a good team you know our, our freshman year to me I mean uh, Jimmy Williams and Marty Burns and Dale Shackelford and Larry Kelly I mean we went 26 and 4 you know we beat Tennessee with Bernard King and Ernie Grunfeld uh, you know Roosevelt came in and you know really solidified the, the team my job was easy you know nobody knew about me uh, but you know, uh, over the years, you know, it was always your time, you know, and, and by the time we became a sophomores, our role got bigger and juniors and seniors, basically that was our time to shine. So uh, it, it, it's funny how things develop. And it was great to have Roosevelt because, you know, really he was the center of attention. So it made my job a lot easier. And, you know, uh, he was such an unselfish player, uh, you know, a team guy. So uh, really, Ever since then, uh, you know, really finding that kind of environment to play in, uh, it, was, it was awfully hard to duplicate. But here at Syracuse, I mean, it was really the, the best teams that I've ever played for.